What's up? What's going on, everybody? Welcome in on a Sunday evening. And Ryan is a little busy at the moment, getting caught up with our draft guide, which will be dropping soon this week. I'm just trying to down a little bit. I am with my daughter. My wife's working. So we will have a little bit of back and forth as we will. Can I turn it down, please? Or can you do that? Yeah, you figured it out. Let me see. Oh. Sorry, got to turn this down. All right, there you go. What's going on? Sorry. Just got to turn the movie down. So here we go. Whew. Yes, Terry, welcome in. Thank you all for being here. Before we get started tonight, because this is going to be another mock draft, I want to know three things. Because Ryan's doing this a lot, right? Give me, in the comment section right now, your favorite player that he's drafted, your least favorite player that he's drafted and the actual draft machine he uses most. So we can keep it kind of, I, I guess, fluid with you guys. Cause I don't want to be doing different things, having different values. We want to keep those same values. Uh, what's going on, Patrick. Nice to see you in here tonight. Doctor. Thank you. Evening RGR nation. You guys, by the way, Ryan just dropped version two of the athletic matrix it is fully updated and ready to go he's got 80 pages of athleticism algorithms for uh, blah, blah, blah. athleticism algorithms for this entire draft class so you guys go ahead get over if you don't have your version of the athletic matrix head on over to rogue apc and get that right now the draft guide i just finished up my last running back for the initial evaluation process. I believe I've gotten a hundred prospects in from the last couple of months to now to get evaluated. So we don't go as extensive as some of the other people out there that put out draft guys. We just don't have the time or the manpower to do so. But every player that we have in this draft guide, we have watched you have our true evaluations, and we will continue to add some players with grades until draft night when we get those live streams for the entire NFL draft. So you guys, welcome in to RGR Football. If you guys have questions, this is a very fluid process tonight. It's not going to be super structured outside of the mock draft itself. And if you desperately need a question answered tonight, Hit me with a super chat. Promise you those will all get answered and addressed 100%. Terry likes sweat. Yeah, I like Tavandre too, but uh, Tavandre's been now got some, some issues with partying. And he was just arrested this morning, I believe, for uh, DUI or DWI, excuse me, DWI, driving while intoxicated. So that is a situation to monitor. As it goes along, what's going on, Thomas? Nice to see you. Not a fan of lad. A couple of people not a fan of lad. Okay, Terry, Thomas, understand. Not a fan of lad. Maybe we'll go a different direction this week uh, if, if that's where Ryan's been going usually. So I'm going to handle this mock draft a little bit differently. The Chiefs have a one, two, three, four, two fives, and a seventh. I've done a lot of work on. The first three round guys, some on the fourth. You all are going to help me with like day three. Uh, I'm I'm going to handle the days one, day two, uh, the days one and day two, and then on day three we're going to get interesting. We're going to have fun, and you guys will help me. We'll we'll pick some of those players together, and I'll basically give it to you guys, throw it to you to actually pick those players, so we can see what the team looks like. Because I know a lot of you do have day three players that you've you've seen that you're looking at um, that I might not have seen and might not have actual eyes on. So I want to be able to get your guys' opinions as much as if I've seen a player or if I know stuff about, stuff about a player, we'll, we'll just kind of throw that out and hash that out as it comes along. So just going to go on over and get some combine numbers, combine results really quick so that we have real information. What's going on, Dub Freak? Nice to see you here. Okay, so from what I understand, Ryan's been using the PFF mock 
So we'll just we'll just keep on with that. Keep on keeping on with the same things that we've been using here that Ryan's been using. I haven't done very many mocks this year. I've been very, very deep into the film and trying to get my real evals, my best evals, and get better as a as an evaluator for this process for this process and not do as many mock drafts. So let's go ahead and jump, jump in. Let's do it, right? This should be. Do, do you guys want me to zoom in on that anymore? Do you think that's okay? Because I want to be able to make sure that we see, uh, we can see everything that we are looking at. Um, oh, I didn't do that properly. That's on me. All right. So, yes, we don't want just round one. We want round seven. Yeah, well, I want to slow this down a little bit. So we can kind of get a good feel for players that are going and kind of talk about some of these drop-offs. Never really know. Yeah, I don't really care about PFF's board. Care for positional value. Yeah, we want to care for positional value. I don't know about you guys, but I want to care about positional value. Um, draft for needs. Not necessarily needs all the time. Get a little bit crazy with it. A um, little less randomness. I'm okay with that. Okay, so here we go. And before we kick it off, we've got a super chat from Dub Freak. Thank you very much. Hey, Dan, might sound crazy, but could you ever see the Chiefs using next year's first to trade up for the left tackle for us the next five years? Um, it, I don't think it's crazy. First of all, you know, thank you for the super chat. And no, I don't, I don't think it's crazy at all. If you vision, envision yourself once again next year drafting at 32, why not, right? Why not use a 32 this year and then a 32 next year to go up and get somebody that you, you think you're not going to be able to get in the next two years. I don't necessarily, again, again, I don't think it's a bad idea because the chiefs are essentially drafting in the second round every single year. And when you don't have 32 first round grades and most of the time, the players you do have first round grades on don't fall to you at 32 or even at 28, you have to trade up to go get one of those players like they did with Trent McDuffie because he fell a little further than they expected. It makes it difficult. So, no, I, I think that this is a good draft to do so. I do think next year's draft so far, from what I understand, is not bad at offensive line, but you see someone you love that is falling, hell, go get them. So, yeah, I appreciate the Super Chat, and I definitely don't think it's crazy to use next year's first-round pick to do that considering – where the Chiefs view themselves and where they have been over the last five years drafting. Appreciate you. All right. So let's go ahead and start off quickly. We will pause after the top 10 and kind of evaluate. Whoops. All right. There we go. So everyone has <laughs> stuck to it. So this is an interesting situation. There is quite a bit of smoke surrounding J.J. McCarthy and New England. It does make some sense. Playing in the cold, they want to run the football. That makes some sense. But one and two, we've pretty much seen um, for the most part here. Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors going, Romo Dunze at seven, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I again, I, I, I switched out some of the uh less team need specific things for this so we can kind of look at what teams value and things like that so if you figure that Roma Dunze plays a little bit like DeAndre Hopkins you don't expect him to have that you have that be there um for your for the future that makes a lot of sense and then there's two tackles that go off honestly the Bears picking Joe Alt is great for them they would it would be a fantastic get if he fell to nine. And you know, Talise Fuaga at the Jets, who I have had mocked to the Jets for forever. Forever. <laughs> so this top 10, while we see JJ McCarthy, Drake May going at three and six, it's not completely outside of the realm of possibilities. We're gonna also stop this around 20 so we can get an idea. I'm also not gonna be trading in this mock draft. I did it again. There we go. Okay. This is probably where the tackle run starts, right? We, we I assume that Joe Alt's going to be selected by 
the Tennessee Titans. I think that that makes a ton of sense for them, and they're going to probably draft a tackle. Obviously, in this draft, they didn't, but that doesn't mean the tackle run isn't going to go, isn't going to start. So here we are with Jared Verse being the second defensive player off the board after Dallas Turner. Makes sense. Uh, Brock Bowers at 12 to the Broncos. Interesting. You got to have someone to throw in the football, all right? Am I, am I right? Am I right there? Troy Fatano going to the uh, Raiders. That's, that's a good pick for them. Yeah, that exactly. This is why it would be a great idea from, you know, Dub Freak to go up and get somebody if you can, because this tackle run is going to be heavy. And from 10 to 20 to 25, there will be a lot of tackles that go. I'm just getting you guys prepared right now. So this draft so far, this mock makes a ton of sense. And this pick makes almost no sense for the Steelers in the first round. <laughs> zero, zero sense. But let's talk about the tackles. Troy Fatanu, Olufashanu, JC Latham, Graham Barton I have inside, but he's going to be able to play all five positions. I think he can spot start a tackle if you need him to. I don't think that's going to be his playing spot in the NFL. So realistically, you might be able to get to 16 <clears throat> if someone falls. I think Seattle would be very interested in trading back because their team looks pretty set. Geno's going to start this year, and maybe they want to trade back and then select a guy like Michael Penix at the end of the first round, acquire some draft capital for the future whenever they do that. So I think that pick 16, if the Chiefs are looking to trade up, is the highest they'll be able to get to. You might be able to get... I mean, I, I personally don't think the Colts will trade with the... I personally don't think the Colts will trade with the Chiefs, Des, mostly because they're now in competition, that they, they, at least they believe, with a healthy Anthony Richardson, that they don't want to help the Chiefs out. I mean, I understand they have ties with Ballard. I'm, I'm of the opinion that 16 is the spot you're looking for because Seattle has been known, typically organizationally with Dan Schneider, to trade back and to acquire capital. And this team construction wise has a lot of the pieces they're looking for. So you might be able to get with them, but Byron Murphy makes a ton of sense for them. Um, you know, so like I said, JC Latham, Graham Barton, this is where the tackle class starts to drop off. And I'll be honest with you guys after the first round, if we see a record number of tackles go, that is why we're, we're talking so heavily about tackle in the first round. Okay. Oh, Des, I, I would, I would appreciate, I would love to be able to inform you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, that's probably a better question for Ryan tomorrow. Trade value stuff is, is really not my area, but we can, we can look at like a realist, maybe not realistic, but kind of a, um, just a situational thing here, right? So from 32 to 21, with adding a third round pick, there's a 50-50% chance that that gets accepted, which tells you they're probably going to have to give up 95 and this to go up a little bit further. You know what I mean? That's all I think. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just throw that out there but tomorrow maybe you ask maybe ryan can have a better idea of of that because i'm just i'm really not the best in terms of trade analysis and cap analysis that's those are weak points in my area that i would i'm going to be working to improve upon this off season that's that's definitely something i'm looking forward to doing so um welcome in everyone we're getting close to 200 people in here we have not selected a pick for the chiefs in the first round yet i'm kind of going over combing over the first round talking about the tackle run so it's going to be, it, this is not too far off from what I think can actually happen. So let's, let's go ahead and resume here. We will stop around 26, 27 and, and see what happens here.
Okay, so we're at 27 right now. And there goes another one and another one. So Marius Mims, Tyler Guyton, both players that I think could play left tackle in the league, gone. I know Mims played right tackle, but he's more than athletic enough to make that switch to left. So, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, Does that see right there? <laughs> right there. That's exactly what I was talking about. So, yes, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, actually, before we get going, let's go ahead and talk about this because this is starting to come up right now. Jonathan, thank you for your question. How comfortable will you be taking Kingsley Suomatia from BYU at 32? If they can't get up, I'm pretty comfortable taking him because I love one. I love Kingsley. I think he's a great player. He plays in a pretty a zone heavy scheme at, at BYU. Comes in. I thought he had a really good senior bowl and he played right tackle and left tackle in college. That that's important for him. So I'm I'm a big fan of him. I think he's going to be a very good pro. And he's cousins to Penny Sewell. So it gives you a little bit more on top of that whole thing. So at 32, if he's there and the Chiefs are the, the, the tackle class is wiped out, wide receiver still has a lot of players. I would be very comfortable taking him at 32. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor James, for your super chat. I like running back Trey Benson and tight end Dallin Hooker in late round. So I'm a big Trey Benson fan. I believe he's my RB2 in this class, RB2, RB3. He's right there. I have a couple of guys tied for uh, three, I believe, or two or three, and he's right there. Um, he's a fantastic back, big. Um, I think he's okay, short area quickness, but he's got speed. He does need a little bit to get going. He's not the most explosive out the gate, but he's really hard to bring down in space, and, and he catches the ball well. I think he needs to work on his technique and pass protection a little bit, but the effort's there, and he's just strong, strong as an ox. So I don't have any tape on Dallin Hooker, Hooker, unfortunately, but I appreciate the input because, like I said, this is as much for me to learn from some of the guys that you guys like as well in the later rounds when we get to. So I'll keep a hook, a Hulker, excuse me, not Hooker, Hulker in mind. Uh, Mayor James, thank you very much for that super chat. Much appreciated. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and just run it through now. And we'll talk about the last few uh, players. And as we get there, two more tackles go off the board. As much as this hurts, it is not outside of the realm of possibilities for the Chiefs. Let's talk about all the tackles that went. Joe Alt, Talise Fuaga, Troy Fontenot, or Troy Fatanu, Oli Fashanu, JC Latham, Graham Barton, if you want to call him a tackle, I don't. Uh, Amarius Mims, Tyler Guyton, Jordan Morgan, who I don't I don't have a tackle either, but we're for sake of argument, we'll say all these teams plan on playing them at tackle. And Kingsley Suomatia. That's 10. That is why we're talking about maybe having to trade up for a tackle. After here, the drop-off is staggering at tackle. Let me just pull them up for you guys. This is this is what we're looking at. I have zero film of Kieran. I can't tell you what he does outside of the fact that he cannot play year one, especially coming out of Yale. Can't do it. Now, Blake Fisher is a right tackle, not left tackle. I don't believe he can play left tackle. I don't think he has the athletic requirements that the Chiefs expect of their left tackles to be able to do that. In this situation, he's not a first-round pick either. So it gets dried up at tackle very, very quickly. So I just don't like the situation here for tackle. But that's why we can do that, right? That's why we that's why we have to do some of these because this, re, this situation is realistic. It's a very realistic situation where the Chiefs are sitting 32 and the player that they want is not there. Now, do I think all 10 tackles are going to go in the first round before the Chiefs pick? No, I don't. I don't think so. But it's got to be talked about. So let's look at the wide receivers. I mean, Ladd, Troy, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pierasol. We're talking about the, the same kind of wide receivers are also not there. 
Worthy, Leggett, but it's not not a, not not the round one guys. I have second round grades on everyone up here. So, do you take a wide receiver, or do you look to the future? So, the two best players available on PFF's board are Kool Aid McKinstry and uh, Johnny Newton. Wants to be called Johnny, not Jerzon. And then looking at everywhere else, I, I would I'm looking, and I think that Johnny Newton is the best player on the board. Um, I think Kool Aid McKinstry makes a lot of sense. He's a basically one for one replacement in terms of man covered corner for Legereus Need. Um, physical in the run game, he comes downhill, he plays well, and this is why I've been floating the idea that Kool Aid McKinstry and and corner at 32 is on the board. It's on the table for the Chiefs. But we're going to have some fun. Because I'm about having fun. <laughs> I'm going to have some fun. All right, we are a couple in here. Yeah, I'm not going to be trading, guys. I'm, I'm going to kind of go up front with this, this mock draft. Just look at how this board falls. We'll talk about it. And we're going to have a little bit of fun. I think Johnny Newton next to Chris Jones and mixing in with their defensive line is a lot of fun. And I'm about having fun right now. So let's talk about uh, picks right here. And then as soon as the Chiefs don't take a wide receiver, they both go. And I understand that people want... I understand people want wide receiver, but if the value is not there, they're not drafting a wide receiver at the end of the first round. If the value for them is not there, if they have someone else graded high, Newton is my is my defensive tackle three. He is, and I'm I'm a big fan. But right here, we see both exactly why. You know, Worthy goes, Leggett goes, Franklin goes, um, some other cornerback here goes, Kool Aid goes. So. We're gonna take a little bit of a different spin here because. They go tackle a defensive tackle first. We might end up having to wait until the round, until the third round to draft a wide receiver. That's in this mock, that's all that matters, right? Oh, Ryan Williams, I apologize, man. I'm sorry that you think so. But tonight, this is my show. We're going to have a little fun because I like having fun and I like Leggett too, Brian. Well, that's a fun little poll. Defensive line is plus 1,500 on DraftKings. Huh. Cool. I understand. I understand. Like, we're looking at tackle. We're looking at, at, at wide receiver. So we're probably going to hit wide receiver here in round two and then look for an upside tackle in round three. But we also have to assume that they probably won't be there. It's just realistic. You never really know what's going to happen. All right, let's keep going. There goes Patrick Paul. Top of the second round, Roger Rosengarten. Let's just wait all the way. So this would have been the tackle, defensive tackle here that the Chiefs uh, possibly pick. If they don't go Johnny Newton in the first round. But let's go ahead and pull up wide receiver. So. And, and this is a, another talking point. that The wide receiver market is going to be very, very high. And we're seeing right here, right? Even after we talked, the three guys that went from 33 to 40. then. We've got Ricky Pearsall goes and Keon Coleman and Roman Wilson, Jermaine Burton, Jalen Polk. Another another realistic scenario, okay? Where the Chiefs are sitting and some of their players aren't there, right? So let's go ahead and talk about wide receiver because I do think that wide receiver here makes a lot of sense. Um but we also need to look at the tackle situation. Blake Fisher's still there. Dominic Pooney, who I believe is an interior guy, um, but he can spot start at tackle. And then, I mean, Matt Goncalves uh, has been getting a lot of hype recently, but that's because this tackle class drops off after the first round. It does, just does. 
Christian, excuse me, Christian Jones, right tackle and not very athletic. Um, Lomaya, not very good. Javon Foster, right tackle, um, probably a good option in third round if the Chiefs want to move. Oh, man, I'm just Juwan Taylor over to left tackle finally and figure that out. And yes, they he did. McMillan did have a top three with the Chiefs this week. They're trying to get information on his injuries. Um, that the Chiefs, it's very well known that the Chiefs use their top 30 picks to get information on other players. All right. And that's especially specifically things that they don't already know that they haven't known. So um for me, right here, with this situation, I'm taking Javon Baker. Um all that I all that I know right now is that Javon Baker reminds me a lot of Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, I know people see him as an X. I, I think that he can win on the outside. I think he's going to be best from the slot in the NFL, but that would mean that the Chiefs have to use Rasheed Rice in a little bit of a different situation, different role, or they have to teach Javon Baker to be a little bit better at creating space on the outside and efficiency with his movements at the top of his route. He's very elongated, takes long steps. He shakes and shimmies a little bit too much. Liven that up a little bit. You know, efficiency is huge there. So that's all I, I will say on that. I mean, I'm not super mad about the chiefs picks so far talking about Johnny Newton and Javon Baker in Kansas city. I'm not too mad about that. in on day one and day two, um, Dominic Pooney still there. We're starting to, to, to look a little, little skimpy here. So, oh man, my guy's even here. It's still two. Dwayne Carter is my defensive tackle too, by the way, guys. So realistically, I think tackle is still on the board problem is that they don't have a real plan here for that situation. Javon, ba J Javon Foster, I think is the, would be the pick here if I'm taking tackle and I'm going to move Javon Taylor to left tackle and I'm going to make Javon Foster my right tackle. I think he's a top 60 player in this, um, in this draft. I think he's a little bit low here on, um, PFF's big board. Because he didn't test well athletically. Or maybe he did test well athletically. I don't remember. But all I know is that tackle here makes sense and there's not a ton of players left on the board that can play. Now, the conversation comes to Dominic Pooney, who, let me pull up his combine numbers really quickly because I can't remember his length from my mind. I love Dominic Pooney. I love the player that he is. Um... I believe he came in with short arms, like 31. No, never mind. 33 and three eighths. So that does pass the length requirements for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, all I know right here is that, like, maybe I draft him, right? How many people like, how many people have watched Dominic Pooney? Like, with 33 and three eighths inch arms, he might be within the threshold. He's got 10 plus inch hands. Um, great mover, sideline to side, uh, side to side. I think his anchor is one of the bigger issues for me specifically. Um, but I I'm a big Dominic Pooney fan. He played very well at the Senior Bowl, and he's another player that can play all five positions um, center, out to right, left tackle. So we'll. We're going to go ahead and take Dominic Pooney here. I, I like this pick, and I thought he had shorter arms than he did, and that's it's definitely something I wasn't expecting um, for him. So he would definitely be on the Chiefs' board there, and if he's there in the third round, I think they would draft him, especially if they went this situation with defense tackle, wide receiver. Um, in the fourth round, I'm going to go back to wide receiver, guys, because after 2024, wide receiver drops off, and they have like four or five different guys that are free agents. It's not great. Cooper BB still on the board. What? That's interesting. <laughs> That's an interesting thing for me. Um, ben Sanat here would also be an interesting option. Um, I will start entertaining running backs 
at this point. I know Ryan won't do that, uh, but uh, it, it's it is what it is. Oh, uh, Bradley, thank you. I I'm I I try to make sure she's not doing anything crazy, but you know, she's 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 had a busy day. She's a little tired, so she's watching her movie. Uh, but I I I appreciate that, Bradley, very very much. Ryan, don't worry about it. We all we all say things we don't mean, and even though you came in here with bad intentions, I'm not going to kick you out. Stay, have a little bit of fun, see what happens here. All right, look at wide receiver here really quickly. Um, I think I have a question to start right here. Okay, Pono, what's going on? Hey Dan, um, what's oh what's your priority position for the Chiefs to move up? It's tackle, without a doubt, it's tackle. They have they might have to move up to get themselves a tackle. We're talking about this situation today on this mock draft where we're selecting Dominic Pooney in the third round because they absolutely have to have a player. It gets tough. It gets tough. The thing for me is if. Dominic Pooney can come in and he plays what? Um, left tackle to start. And then Trey Smith doesn't re-sign in Kansas City and they draft a tackle next year or they bring in a free agent. You have your immediate, immediate replacement for Trey Smith in 2025 with Dominic Pooney who slides inside and he plays. Or he can play center and you kick Creed Humphrey out to guard. So I love the versatility that he brings because I do think he can survive at, at left tackle initially. Again, the length was more than I expected from him and his technique and his athleticism help, but the anchor, the, the speed to power from defensive ends is where I have some questions and he does let them inside his chest a little bit. But what we've seen over the past couple of years at left tackle and pass protection is what it is. So. For me, Pono, it absolutely is trading up to get a defense, or excuse me, a, a offensive tackle. So let's look at the wide receivers, wide receiver spot here, man. This is again, we're talking about nobodies. Wide receiver, obviously, PFF is extremely high on wide receivers, positions of value, things like that. Um, but looking down the board here. There's not a, there's just not a ton of players. <clears throat> now. So this is, I, I, I agree with that, uh, Tad, I agree. I think BB's going to, uh, BB's going to be gone too. He's a day two pick all the way. Um, now we're on day three. You guys are going to help me out here. What position should I look at to draft? What do you guys want to pick? What what position should I go? Should I just go ahead and pick Ben Sinat? Should I, should I do that? Why not? I mean, the, I'm 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 not entertaining defensive end because they just brought back um, my guy Mike Dana. So that that's my 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 thing. I think I like Ben Sinat too. Um, and you see Ryan went Camara there too. So, and you guys remember really quickly, take two seconds, hit that like button. Seeing a lot of most likely Kansas State fans asking me to take Ben Sinat, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's lock it in, guys. Let's take Ben Sinat. I like it. I, I think this is a really big effort player. And while he's got a lot of upside, still got to work into it. I, I think he makes a lot of sense there, specifically if he's available and the Chiefs still need a, a you know a tight end, which we'll find out. But uh, I don't know, man. Hey, look, Mayor James, your guy's right here. Ooh, I just took out my microphone. My bad. Two Kansas guys must be illegal. <laughs> Uh, it's never happened before. Um, this also is not going to happen. Zach Center will not be in the fourth round, fifth round. Not going to happen because he had he got injured in the last game of the season, I believe, for Michigan, and he was one of the best guards in in football in college football. 
Uh, Tyler, no, I didn't take BB because I drafted Dominic Pooney in the third round, who I think is going to be the natural replacement for Nick Allegretti, period. I think he can play all five positions. That's why I didn't take him. For me, it didn't make a lot of sense. Um, I like BB. I think he's going to be a top 50, top 60 kind of player. He's going to get drafted in, in, in that range, maybe maybe lower, maybe third round. But that, that's that's my reasoning for not taking him there. Also, like, I don't believe Zinter will be here, but you never know. <clears throat> Looking at some of these guys, Bo Braid, Joe Milton, transfer him to you know wide receiver maybe. <laughs> Caitlin Clark is the pick here. Yeah, I like it. I would I would draft her if I could. Uh, Dylan Lobb, a lot of people love Dylan Lobb. What do you guys feel about about running back right here? Or, hey, maybe we just take Javon Foster, right? <laughs> maybe we just take him. <laughs> oh, PFF doesn't like these guy. Am I thinking of the right of the the right one? I think yeah, Javon Foster. They really don't like him. Dwight McLaughlin. Now, um, Nemaya Pritchett. Johnny Dixon is one of my favorite guys in this class. And he's here in the fifth round, which doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys the position. You pick the position, okay? Um, between cornerback, wide receiver, or running back, which one y'all want? Cornerback, running back, wide receiver. Give me the position, and then we'll go in and we'll take a look. I'll look for some questions in here you guys got too. So. Uh, and Tavius, thank you very much, man. Appreciate you being in here. Sup, Dan? I'm watching from the beginning of Marshawn Lloyd that Ryan drafted. Yeah, Marshawn Lloyd. I actually, I'm not as big a fan of Marshawn Lloyd as I thought I was. Like, I like him, but I I don't know why everyone else is so much higher on a guy who can't see. I don't know. Didn't play very much at at USC either. I don't know. I have questions. Uh, Nikki, thank you very much for your question. Dan, do you think a woman will ever play maybe as a kicker? I don't know. I, I, I don't personally care. As long as they're good enough, why do I care? Um, So I think eventually you'll, you'll get a, a woman that comes along that can kick a, a, amazing and be able to do that. So I think eventually if the, if the game continues the way that it's going right now, it's definitely within the realm of possibilities. And I, I think that athletes everywhere are just getting better and better. So definitely within the realm of possibilities. Why wide receiver? Why not wide receiver? There's a guy up here that I really like, Anthony Gould, who's a speed guy. Right here. I think that Luke McCaffrey in the fifth round is fine. Um, but Anthony Gould's a fun player. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and see. We've got running back, running back, running back, running back. Running back, running back. All right, let's go running back. Lots of people asking for running back. So let's go do it. All right, we've got Dylan Laub, Dylan Johnson, Kimani Vidal. I'm not taking Cody Schrader, guys. I know that a lot of you are big Cody Schrader fans, and I've already taken a lot of like Missouri and Kansas players this area. So I'm... Personally, pretty big on Frank Gore Jr. Um, Isaiah Davis is a good back. Rasheen Ali is a, a very good running back out of Marshall, who honestly was so good at the Senior Bowl that he, coming out of Marshall, was able to leave early. Like, that's pretty insane, um, in my opinion. But I'm not big on Kimani Vidal. You guys will find that out in the draft guide. I just finished him today. Um, he's getting a lot of hype right now. I'm just not there. Dylan Johnson disappointed me disappointing me guys yeah tracy's already gone um so real quickly i know we're getting some some new people in here let me find where are all of my people do you guys know how to find all of them can is there a way to show like all the picks so far or we have to wait to the end Maybe I'm just dumb because that's possible too. But regardless, so, so far, 
Justin. Okay, we have to wait till the end of it. Fine. So, Justin, what we've done so far is the first round, 10 tackles were selected. It's 10 of them. So, we took Johnny Newton at 32, defensive lineman out of Iowa. No, not Iowa, Illinois, excuse me. In the second round, we took wide receiver out of Central Florida, transfer from Alabama. Um, oh, why am I? I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? We just drafted him, and I can't even think of his name. Um, I hate myself sometimes. I have overload on everybody. I can't think of his name. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I gotta find him now. Javon Baker. Good lord. Woof. Javon Baker out of Central Florida. In the third round, we took Dominic Pooney, tackle slash interior out of Kansas. In the fourth round, we drafted the tight end out of Kansas State, Ben Sinat. And we're about to take a running back, I think. Yeah. And now when we're in the fifth round, we're about to take a running back. So we have two fifth round picks. I'm going to draft the running back. Um, and I saw there was a question about running down, quick breakdown of Frank Gore. Yes. So I'm going to draft him and then I'm talk about him. So Brent, he is still a big like effort guy coming out of Southern Miss. You're going to have to be working for everything that you have, but he's fast. He's got good vision, not great vision. I think he's a good short area player, a good overall athlete, and he played wide receiver and quarterback at times for Southern Miss. So he has a can, he can throw the football. He can run routes. He can catch the football, but he is still learning. Let me look up his, his numbers really quick before you guys. So I, I can see those and give you a better idea where where he is is he was he not invited and he wasn't okay just i'm just gonna pull up his numbers really quick his height and weight and stuff like that all right so he's 5'8 201 pounds and he's got short arms and he's got short um small hands i, I like him it's more of a traits on the field kind of kind of guy, kind of thing. He is an every down player. Like he, he can play every th every every downs, all the downs. He's a good durable player. He doesn't really get hurt. And I I tend to think he's better short area than I've seen a lot of people. But I mean, when we get to the NFL, that's that that's really trying to figure out: is it college at Southern Miss or is it good enough for the NFL? I don't know. Something we have to find out. And again, that's just more of a Frank Gore was his dad and Frank Gore just continued to prove everybody wrong. And I think his son can do it too. Um, all right. Let's go over to the cornerbacks. Cause again, this is going to be an area where I don't have as much knowledge. And I'm also going to pull up our, our guy, EJ, who did our cornerbacks and our safeties for our, our draft guide that's coming out this week. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin in Arkansas. He's pretty high on him. He's a call, tall cornerback. He shows good straight line speed, a good awareness and route recognition on plays in front of him. Most effective playing off man or zone, or he can read through the receiver to the quarterback. So not necessarily a guy that's going to play a lot of press coverage for Kansas City's needs. Um, so in terms of some of these guys probably not. Bum, 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 bum. We will look at, at cornerback though, because Nehemiah Pritchett is another player that is on the board right now. And like I said, I'm I'm looking at at EJ's grades because I I trust that man with everything that he does. Um, his notes on him: physically gifted cornerback, not at a disadvantage on an island of man coverage. That's good to see. I like that. Shows good awareness in zone. Used primarily playing off man and press. Good. Stay in phase on vertical routes and can disrupt at the catch point. That sounds like a Chiefs corner at six one one at six foot one ninety. I think that that is a a Chiefs kind of corner. Uh, but I'm seeing some Tennessee guys, 
Someone talking about Tennessee cornerback, which is not available in this draft. <laughs> cornerback out of Boston College also does not look to be available in this draft. <laughs> it's so weird, guys. Like this is just so weird. Um, but this so far looks to be the guy. Not showing me his. I'm okay with that. Whoops. I'm going to take Pritchett. Hey, before before we actually draft a cornerback, let's look at the wide receiver. I am going rogue, Ryan. Or Justin. Jeez. I am. I have to go rogue. And the guy that I want to draft is still going to be there. So I'm going to take Pritchett. I think that's a good pick for Kansas City, especially on day three. Um, and then we're going to see... Actually, the Chiefs don't have a pick again until the third round. So, next to the seventh. Geez, good Lord, seventh round. My brain is on fire, guys. I do apologize. Um, I have been watching so much tape that my brain's fried. You guys saw me on All Chiefed Up last night. I was doing the same kind of stuff. My brain was, my brain's been fried, guys. Like, it's been all over the place. All right. Last pick. Of this draft, I think. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> I'm going to actually look up Ledigic Griffin really quickly because I am going to watch him this week. And I'm interested. He, it's, it's He's interesting to me. Find his numbers really quickly here. I say really quickly, but I don't know. Measured in. At 5'10", 181, ran a 4'4", 1'5", 35-inch vertical, 10'4", broad, 7'3", cone, 4'3", uh, 5", short shuttle. So, not bad. I, he's he's more of a flashy guy. He, he'll be a, a guy that flashes on tape. But we this isn't even a full, a full list. Um, but these are all the players that are currently available on the board. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, oh, I really do. Really do. So, oh, this makes no sense. Why are they so low on Brandon Coleman? Why do they hate Brandon Coleman? Brandon Coleman's going to go like day two. What are we doing here? <laughs> that's pretty funny brent i like that he's in good hands I'll, I'll be very honest with you guys i have not done a lick of any of these why these running back or excuse me these tight ends um not tight ends linebackers safeties corners in this range i haven't really seen any of these guys um what's this <laughs> Six eight tackle out of Howard. That's fun. Um, I, I don't think Brandon Coleman's gonna be here. It makes no sense to me, but I'll give you guys a couple players and you can you you can determine who who I pick here. Brandon Coleman out of TCU. <laughs> it's getting it's getting dicey. Tua's brother. <laughs> right get to his brother man this is rough tyler owens kenny logan any of these like guys right cj hansen's interesting who's that let me look him up real quick maybe okay so a six six guard 305 redshirt senior Interesting. Yeah, Thomas, we we got uh, a running back already. I'm, I'm I'm definitely not taking two running backs in a draft. Ryan's head would explode. Um, Justin, we drafted one wide receiver, Javon Baker out of Central Florida. One wide receiver. It's weird. It's weird. I'm not a fan of how the draft fell i think that we got some good value picks for it but 
best athlete available for special teams? Well, you all tell me who it is because I don't know who it is. <laughs> Should we go safety or linebacker? No, sorry, sorry, safety or offensive line? Because I'm just about to take Brandon Coleman and be done with it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. Trayvon Wallace, O-line. Kevin, we'll put the the draft board up as soon as I can. I can't do it until we pick. <laughs> All right, I see a lot of offensive line in here. We'll go offensive line. It's between Brandon Coleman or CJ Hansen. Coleman or Hansen, you guys, in the chat. You pick them, and then we'll get this board up here. And get you all out of here for tonight. We got Coleman. We got Coleman. Hanson. Coleman. Couple of Hansons. All right. Brandon Coleman, it is. So here we go. As this finishes up here. So this draft. In the first round, for those of you joining or didn't get to see the first round, 10 tackles went if you qualify Jordan Morgan and um, Graham Barton out of Duke as tackles. So, I don't know how to put polls in here, man. Justin, I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't care about your opinions. They really hate drafting running backs, by the way. They hate it. Um, so... The, the first round went weirdly with Tenton tackles going off in the first round. And since I personally believe that the Chiefs might be able to to uh, trade up to get, to get someone they want to with the Seattle Seahawks at 16, I think that's the highest they can go, my own opinion on that. Uh, but like I said, tackles went and the wide receiver room looked good to begin with. And then it started to get dicey. It started to get those guys started to go. And that's why we saw Javon Baker in round two. Um, this is not a bad draft, in my opinion. Again, if we're talking Brandon Coleman in the seventh round, something is wrong with him medically. Like Trey Smith when the Chiefs drafted him in the sixth round. Like that's a medical thing. Coleman is most likely a day two player. Um, go back to two years ago when TCU had Steve Avila and Brandon Coleman blocking. Like they were moving guys. So if he were to fall that far, this is a a fantastic place to get him because you could just put him at guard or Pooney at guard and say, figure it out. But you can just play your five best offensive linemen. So in the first round, uh, Johnny Newton out of Illinois, who is my defensive tackle three. And the top, I think this defensive tackle class is very, very good. And he's among the best of them, especially in the uh, pass rush department. He just hugely hits quarterbacks whenever he gets close. He absolutely demolishes them. Javon Baker catches a ton of, uh, of footballs. I think his quarterback played a huge part in his quote-unquote drop rate in the last couple of years. Uh, Dominic Pooney can play all five positions out of Kansas. Loved his tape, loved his senior bowl, did a fantastic job there. Ben Sinat is going to give you uh, tight end, wide receiver, fullback flexibility, all of those kind of things. And, and I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan there um, of what he can do. Him and Frank Gore were more of a, a picks on upside. I, I think Frank Gore is going to outperform his draft stock wherever he goes. He's going to outwork a lot of people. Um, but at the end of the day, you can just take the running back out and replace it, whichever running back you guys like or who you want, because it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, Namaya Pritchett. Yeah. I read down EJ's film breakdown of Pritchett and the things that he does. Well, he fits right into what the chiefs like for a press man covert corner. He's six foot 190 pounds and he's going to play. And I like, I like that kind of player on my team as well. And then, like I said, Brandon Coleman is a physical offensive lineman, whether he plays most likely guard and maybe right tackle in the NFL. So there's a rundown of all of that situation. And just be aware that tackle very well could just go off the board, just completely go off the board. So there's a ton of different things that could happen. And I think this was a good, a good mock to have done. 
just in case to get you guys prepared for if that situation were to fall, you can kind of see what it would look like. Um, so I'm going to answer this question and we will get you guys out of here. Thank y'all for being with me tonight, Sunday evening. Um, Belisarius, hey Dan, how does Luke McCaffrey measure up to his brother? His father worth taking a shot in the fifth round on him. Sure. Uh, fine. Day three pick, sixth round, end of the fifth round. Fine. But I think he's a scheme to touch player. The f he has a quarterback body. He played quarterback at Michigan, transferred, I think, to Nebraska, and then to Rice, and made the transition to, transition to wide receiver. And, and he just doesn't have the build, in my opinion, the short area footwork, the technical skills to succeed and get better from a wide receiver standpoint. I think that he's going to be more of a scheme to touch player. He has pretty good straight line speed. He's not going to do much in terms of what his father or what Christian McCaffrey could do at wide receiver as a running back. So it's fine if you want to spend a day three pick on him and hope he develops. I'm personally just going to take another shot at cornerback and see what happens. <laughs> but uh, again, at this point on day three stuff, I'm going to get some more eyes on day three guys as we get closer to draft. So we have more of that to talk about specifically to get you guys prepared for players of the Chiefs might draft. So thank you all very much for joining me this evening. This, I liked parts, most of this draft. I think that this makes a lot of sense. It fills a lot of needs and it gives them some pretty good positional value. In my opinion, I think Baker might be a tad high, uh, but at 64, it is what it is. Um, you guys, thank you all again very much for being here with me tonight. Tomorrow, make sure to come on back for the Q&A with myself and Ryan as we get closer and closer to the NFL draft. And don't forget, the newest edition of the Athletic Matrix has, Athletic Matrix has been updated and is dropped. You can head on over to RogueAPC.com right now and get the newest edition in our draft guide. Myself, Ryan, and EJ Holt, all of our film grades are going to be up there with the stats, with the Athletic Matrix. It's going to be dropping this week. We'll have you guys more updated tomorrow on the Q&A. Please tune in. I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic evening. Start your week off tomorrow strong with another mock draft and send it to me on Twitter. I want to see what you guys have in store for the Chiefs for the 2024 NFL draft. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.